There we go. That was weird. I thought it was connected again. Like, I know it went down, but it usually auto-reconnects. But it didn't do that. It's very annoying. I had to, like, manually restart it. When did I cut out? Not entirely sure. Oh, okay. So yeah, a Decker in this setting, that's what my character is. And so they're basically a class that has a, a data jack on the back of their neck. So they can jack into the matrix, which is what the cyber area is called. Where I'm, you know, fighting all of the different programs and everything to get data or hack cameras or whatever. So that's what a Decker is, and I'm also terrible at fighting, as you can see by my aim. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, I'm a terrible fighter, as you can see by my aim, so that's kind of where the, the title came from. That's why I have other people to fight for me. Yeah. Of course. And it, yeah, it told me I was still live. Fucking failure of a program. And it usually auto reconnects, but it didn't do that this time. Which, I know I've already mentioned that, but it's very odd. Too late, they're here. Fast response team inbound. Hold until the reinforcements arrive. I wonder if I can actually rescue that person, because that would be ideal. I really like riggers. That's what that's what this guy is. That means that like he's another tech class. And he can control drones and things like that. And the drones are very useful. Where do I want you? I want you right here, actually, because there's magic on that area. And Iger, you can go here. I knew it. The second I put those two together. But I didn't see the magical energy until I had already moved glory. Five damage per round? I mean, ten? Oh my god. That is a lot. Alright, Dietrich, what do you got for me? Perfect. Hey, Ando. Eventually. This is the second game. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Eh, that was not a good... There we go. That was better. Oh 
god. Alright. I didn't know I was still in spray and pray mode. Yeah, it is a little bit XCOM. For sure. That's what it reminded me of when I first played it. Hmm. Five HP. Well, that fucking sucks. What the hell is that? Do you guys weird. Anyway, okay. Why not? Yeah, it does look a lot like Shadowrun Returns, and I'm still playing... I made the same character over again. Oh my god. Oh, come on, Dietrich. <laughs> How do I get rid of this inferno? It's silly. See what I mean? <laughs> I hardly get any hits in, and I do like two damage per hit. It's crazy. The first XCOM I played was Enemy Within, I believe. Okay, I'm really glad I didn't get glory as well. Alright, time to switch to the sniper. Ow. This probably would have been a good time to summon something. What have you got? Ha! You are all on fire. Payback. I thought she was going to miss that. Ah, oh, no. Alright, I'll wait for her to get out of there before I do that.
Oh, that guy needs to go. He's a caster as well. Ooh, yeah, clump together more. Perfect. Oh, shit. Um, I guess go after this guy since he's not the only one conveniently clumped together. This is great. Ha! How's it going? Um, so... Okay, see you later, Ten. See you next time. So, is the... Is Lord Iron Lion... Was that your cousin or your friend? I can't remember. Damn, Glory. Okay, that's your cousin. I thought so. Okay. See you in a bit, Ando. Ha! I'm saving. <laughs> I need to save after that. From the description that your client gave you, this must be your target, the rigger, Thorvald Enstad. You can see him waving and pounding on the plastic of his cell door, but from where you're standing, the scene is eerily silent. He looks like he's had a rough go of things. One of his eyes has been blackened, and his lower lip split wide open. Not particularly surprising, given the temperament of his captors. The only incongruous element is his outfit. He's decked out head to toe, in patched black riding leathers. A pair of oversized studded combat boots shine in the halogen glare of the cell's lighting panels. From his style of dress, it's obvious this dwarf is not a corporate employee. He's a shadow runner. This isn't some corporate goon boss. Look at him. He's one of us. Glory shudders but holds her silence. Dietrich lays a hand on the bare metal of Glory's shoulder. She flinches, but only barely. When he speaks, his voice is soft. There but for the grace of God, eh, love? Glory's eyes remain fixed on the rigger, who continues to hammer impotently on the door of his cell. Something like that. Alright, I'm gonna save again. <laughs> I save all the time. Alright, see you in a bit. Yeah, dude. Glory, especially with haste on, she was just unstoppable in that fight. Oh yeah, I agree. I save all the time. The door slides open and the stench of stale sweat assaults your nostrils. Enstad steps forward. His body... his... <laughs> I can't read. His bloody lips curled into a smile. The soles of his boots squeak on the polished tile floor. Free at last, thank Christ. His smile widens into a sickly grin. Tar-stained teeth shine wetly in the light. Didn't think I'd warrant to rescue whoever sent you. A 
afraid you're wrong about that. I was sent here to tie up loose ends, namely you. His eyes go wide. He raises his trembling hands in surrender. Whoa there, Chief. I, I don't know what your client told you. Said your team botched a run. Went loud too early. Got a lot of people killed. Us? We botched the run? That's bullshit, man. We did everything like we were supposed to. Like always, it was that bastard's bad intel that got us hung out to dry. Sounds familiar. Please, hear me out. I promise. I'll make it worth your while if you, you do. Glory shrugs. Couldn't hurt to hear what he has to say. His hands clasp in front of him, in a sign of supplication. You can see the terror in his eyes. Go ahead, talk. Alright, okay. So, we go in, right? Me and my team. And we're doing just what the client told us to. Well, the bastard forgot to mention that Pharma had a knight errant security contract for the place. He told us that there would be little, if any, resistance. So imagine our surprise when a KE response team kicked in the door and unloaded on us. Quit trying to shift the blame. Adapting to unanticipated situations is part of a Shadowrunner's job description. And yeah, this is where the etiquettes come in. They give you options, and you're like, I have Shadowrunner etiquette. You can also have, like, corporate etiquette, or gang etiquette, or street etiquette, and have unique conversation options with different types of people. Oh, for Christ's sake, what were we supposed to do? Thanks to Fuke's bad intel, we all... We left all the heavy ordnance at home. No collateral damage, he told us. Funny how little K.E. seemed to share his concern. It took them all of two seconds before they started lobbing grenades at us. You know where I'm coming from, pal. I can see it in your eyes. You've been on jobs that went south before. The only difference between you and me is that you were lucky enough not to get caught. Look, I can see that you're skeptical. I get that. Can't blame you for it either. You don't know me for madam. But I know one thing that you will understand. I'd like to offer you a trade. I've got a little toy hidden away. Managed to stash it before those knight errant pukes took me in. My own design. Totally one of a kind. I call it a pain inducer. Grade A fun for the runner who is everything. And I guarantee that you'll never find another. You let me live and it's all yours. Put a fucking ribbon on it for you. Then I'll disappear. Never bother any of you again. Scout's honor. Even if... Even if we'd consider going off mission, she shoots you a significant glance, which we wouldn't. She turns back to Enstad, staring him down. Did you honestly think that we'd sacrifice our professional integrity and 15,000 new yen payday for a trinket? He nods slowly. Fifteen, huh? I... I can match that. You let me live, and I'll pay your wage, plus the inducer. Hell, you could even tell your client I'm dead and bill him too, double your earnings. What do you think about that? How do you come by the 15 grand? I had a big payday a while back, put the extra cash in my rainy day fund. Trust me, pal. I can pay you the money. You help me out, and I'll transfer it to you myself. We just need to get back to the room where I stashed my PDA. And what does this pain inducer do exactly? Induces pain. <laughs> it's a narrow band microwave projector. Causes debilitating pain in a target and screws with the electrical systems of drones and the like. Think of it as a taser, only easier to use and meaner, and a whole lot more fun. Hmm. See? I have a feeling it'll bite me in the ass if I let him live, but I don't really want to kill him. Uh. Alright, deal. Let's get out of here. You won't regret it, friend. Promise. Iger holds her tongue, but her body language speaks volumes. Tight lips, rigid pose, slight color in her pale cheeks. You've seen it before. She is furious. Okay. 
I can't like hack into anything. I guess not. I swear there should be a console around here that I can jack into. I don't see one. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Enstad slows to a stop at the window. His eyes are locked on a stack of corpses piled up on the cell floor. My old team. Sorry, sons of bitches. Bet they never thought I'd be the last man standing. Why not? Usually right in the thick of the action. Easy to get shot under those circumstances. If I hadn't been downstairs when K.E. smashed in, I'd be in that pile with them. Hmm, funny. In my experience, Rickers usually stay away from the thick of combat. They tend to use their drones for that. Well, I ain't that kind of rigor. Drones ain't my thing so much. So, you're a getaway driver? Dietrich shoots the rigor a sidelong glance. Vehicle riggers are even less likely to be found on the front lines. Nah. I'm a spider. My specialty is taking over building systems. To do that, I need to find a data tap. And to do that, I need to charge on with the rest of the team. A security rigger, huh? Don't see too many of those in the shadows. Lose your corporate job? corporate life. Well, let's just say that it wasn't for me. I needed to work in an environment where my creativity would be rewarded. I think we might have seen some signs of your creativity on the way up here. He shrugs. Might have. Can't say one way or another until you show me what you're talking about. Anyway, we should probably get moving, don't you think? I don't want to be up here when more of those night errant bastards show up. save. <laughs> I could have locked out the reinforcements. I swear there must be a terminal around here somewhere that I missed. As he hurried past the scene of the carnage in the operating theater, a peculiar smile crosses the rigger's face. He slows to a stop, then points at the dismembered body on the other side of the glass. See something funny? Oh no, nothing much. His smile broadens, and a stream of giggles comes pouring out of him. Uh, no, it's a uh, pretty horrible stuff, man. Why don't I believe you? Well, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? He looks you dead in the eye, his expression neutral. Then that sickly grin returns and he starts to giggle again. Okay, okay, you caught me. Red-faced, he wipes a tear from the corner of his eye. This. This was one of mine. Couldn't tell you how excited I was to see this stuff. Such incredible toys. It was way too good an opportunity to pass up. That doesn't look, look like a knight errant employee. Looks more like a lab tech to me. He nods enthusiastically. This was a fun one. Little prick couldn't believe it when I set the auto surgeon on him. He kept trying to get away, but whenever he went, one of his one of my arms was there. Rip, rip. And all the while, he was screaming like little girl. Ee, ee. Must have kept it for oh, 10, 15 minutes. Ee. He barks a snorting laugh. It was hilarious, man, I tell you. Flurry gives you a significant glance. You can see the disgust in her eyes. I'll point out the other stuff when I see it. There was this one guy that I locked in a room with a manipulator arm. He wipes a tear from the corner of his eye. It was fucking classic. To hell with the trinket. Letting this bastard go would be wrong, boss. You know that. Besides, which he lied to us. There was no bad intel. This bastard is the reason why things went south with that run. I can feel it in my bones. 
abruptly, and Stodd's laughter stops. Fuck is he talking about? We have a deal. If you don't want to kill him, that's fine. Dietrich stares at the wounded Dietrich stares the wounded rigor down. You can feel the crackle of magic swelling around him. Let me do it. I'll help. It's what we should have done in the first place. At that moment, the door behind you slides open. A trio of figures makes their way into the room. Uh, the leader of the group is an elf with Asian features. Yeah, this guy is a creepy bastard. And yeah, if I had the choice to do it, I would actually kill him now. But I don't know if it'll give me that choice. The leader of the group is a half-elf with Asian features. He's obviously a vat job. The bands of corded muscle that bulge out under his sleeve have a distinctly store-bought look to them. When he speaks, his voice comes out in a gravelly rumble. My, my, the intrepid pixel with her target in tow. What a surprise. Who the hell are you? There, Fuchs sent us to check up on you. Given his recent troubles with Shadowrunners, this could not come as a surprise. The company man smiles at Enstad. The rigor shrinks back against the wall. No more than your betrayal surprises me. Betrayal? No. Enstad was never going to leave this building alive. Allow me to demonstrate. The company man inspects the rigor's corpse, a dispassionate expression uh, blah, a dispassionate expression on his face. He shifts his gaze back up to you. It would appear that you might possess some small shred of integrity after all. It isn't your place to judge my integrity, lapdog. Leave that to Herr Fuchs. The company man pauses for a moment, then nods. Very well. I will inform Herr Fuchs of the mission's completion and the circumstances surrounding it. He will decide for himself what to make of this. Ah yeah, well, I got to kill him. Yeah, I kind of had a bad feeling about doing that, but... Not enough of a bad feeling to not do it, I suppose. Uh, I don't have enough karma to get anything new. Alright, let's go home. Your subway car is empty on the return trip to the cruise bazaar. The stretch of the sprawling U-Bahn tunnel system doesn't see much use, it seems. At least not at this hour. As your train rattles on, you find yourself lost in thought. Old memories creep, unbidden, to the forefront of your mind. Memories of Monica in the old days, and the crew that you used to run with. Memories of success and failure, of wealth and poverty, of good times and bad. Halfway back to the cruise bazaar, you are jolted out of your reverie by a buzzing sound. You're comlink. You're receiving a call. Your comlink buzzes. A quick glance at the screen tells you that Amsel is on the line. You pick up and his voice fills your ear. Pixel. I trust that I'm catching you at a good time. As good a time as any? What's up? I've made contact with another prospective client, a rather elusive woman from Aslaner descent. She calls herself Frau Muller. What's the job? She will not say, not to me at any rate. She has insisted that she will speak only with you. She wants to meet with you in a half hour's time at the location of your choosing. What's she offering for this mystery job? 
36,000 new yen. Quite an impressive sum, Pixel. I would not have bothered you with this otherwise. That's a lot of money. Alright, count me in. Very good. I will instruct her to come to the cruise bazaar. Where would you like to meet? meet at the cafe. Why not? Noted. I will set up the meet. Pixel, there's one other thing you should... Your comlink cuts out to static. A moment later, the lights in the U-Bahn car flicker and wink out. You hear the screeching sound of steel on steel, and the train grinds to a halt. Well, this is probably not good. I'm gonna save. Looks like the whole station has lost power. Hmm. Did I see some loot I can pick up? Oh yeah. Got a med kit. It's a fuse box. Nothing looks out of order. The lights in the bathroom go up. The status light next to the track remains red. Collapse, not getting out this way. Ooh, a new fuse. Looks like some squatters are living in the station. Alright. Can I not? Okay, good. It's like, what? Can I not mess with the fuse box anymore? Okay, I'm gonna swap the bathroom one into... Okay, cool. Perfect. Station's main power is off. The train's not going anywhere till it's back on. Ah. Okay, that was my hair. Felt like there was something on my collarbone. Well, I guess there was. It was my hair, though, so. Just freaked me out for a minute. Looks like the console can extend the nearby bridge to cross its tracks. Alright. Looks like we can take this train. Or maybe not. So dark in this maintenance area that you can barely see your hand in front of your face. This door is stuck shut. Iger's shoulder checks the door, and the crack of splintering plastic fills your ears. The door pops open. And I can't see shit, but I know there's loot in here. And. Okay, nothing else. So let's. Go to this door. I can't see. Oh god. That's them! Open fire! God, I'm the worst shot. <laughs> Fucking really?
They do not like me. Oh my god. So bad. <laughs> Got that person that time. Yeah, <sighs> not doing well at all. That was a terrible cast, Dietrich. See, I only do okay when I'm flanking somebody. Otherwise, it's so bad. Encrypted PDA. Are we done? Oh, shit. There are more. Oh, that's where I am. Well, shit. Should have known. Yeah, I'm not going out there. Um. If I take out this guy first. Then I can bring everyone else in here to get these guys. Might as well bring Iger in here, I guess. She, she can take it. She's tough.
seemed like it hurt more than it did. All right, I'll bring Pixel in now. There. Die. Shoot again? Ha! Nice. I thought I had to reload. Alright, she should be able to finish him off. Close enough. here doesn't look like the train will be going anywhere oh right I need to put the bridge back up The rest of the trip home is uneventful, but one thing is clear. Someone is hunting you. This ambush was no chance gang warfare, but an organized attempt on your life. If Green Winters was right, then whoever killed him is now after you. The PDA that you re retrieved from your attackers may hold some answers. It's time to return to your safe house and consult Paul Emsel. Shit. Why is that a new objective? Ooh, ten karma. calls over his shoulder at the sound of your approach. His eyes are glued to his computer's display. Pixel, Frau Muller, should be on her way. But before you go to the meeting site, I have news. He glances at you and his words trail off. Upon seeing the expression on your face, Amsel's voice becomes grave. It can wait. Tell me what has happened. by a bunch of idiots. 
Bad news, my friend. Someone is hunting us. They set up an ambush on the U-Bahn. Amsel pauses, then gives a curt nod. Truth be told, I've been expecting that something like this might happen. I'm just glad that you made it out alive. When did the attackers drop this? Amsel takes the PDA from you and examines it. Yes. Yes, I should be able to extract some information from this. Give me a moment. He plugs the PDA into his computer and goes to work. A few moments later, he lets out a grunt of dismay. Well, Pixel, I was able to recover a file, but unfortunately, that's all I'll ever be able to pull off of this thing. All that anyone will, truth to be told. It must have been running some kind of counter-intrusion software. The instant that I gained access, it bricked itself. Amsel disconnects the useless PDA and drops it to the ground. It clatters to a rest on the middle floor. <laughs> One whole file? Nice job, Paul. He shakes his head in exasperation. Your attitude is trying, Pixel. This is serious. I'd expect that you treat it as such. You're right. I'm sorry, Paul. Please, go on. Very well. I managed to pull a file off of the PDA before it crashed, as I was saying. It looks to be a comm file. The audio is all here, but we've only got video from one side of the conversation. He opens the file, and a nightmarishly familiar face appears on the screen. Ugh. Bachmeyer. The voice bleats out from Amsel's speakers filling the room. Audrin here. What is your status? Bachmeyer's image is garbled, but his voice sounds young and eager. Target acquired, sir. You were right. We spotted her on the U-Bahn. Just like you said. Probably on her way to a job. As per your instructions, we're going to take her out on her way back. She'll be more vulnerable that way. Hopefully injured and low on ammo too, but only time will tell. Good man. Proceed as instructed. Will do, Cospin. Is rigging up an ambush spot right now. We'll try to make it quick. The orc with the nightmare face nods. Send me a calm when the job is done. Audrin out. The image on the computer screen dies. Amsel turns to face you. Well, our scarred friend makes an appearance. P Pixel, I suspect that Green Winter's predictions are coming true. I believe that Fearswing is behind this. Under Amsel's patient exterior, you can feel the worry that's eating at him. Be on your guard, you and the rest of the team. You made it through this attack relatively unscathed, but next time, you might not be so lucky. At least now we have a name to put to the face. Audrin. That's not all we have. As I was saying when you first walked in, I've been productive as well. I was able to uncover some new evidence in your absence, and coincidentally enough, that evidence pertains to our scarred friend. You might recall that I said I'd dig into Audrin's skin grafts. Well, I did, and that search has finally borne fruit. One of my contacts outside of Berlin handles the paperwork for private hospitals all across Germany. It's a dull, boring job, but it does have its perks. Amsel pulls open the file on his computer. A medical chart opens up on the screen. As it turns out, our scarred friend's skin grafts were performed at a legitimate hospital after all. You glance over the chart with a trained eye. A few s salient details leap out at you. Firstly, there was almost no personally identifying information listed on the chart. Apparently, Audrin was delivered to the hospital without any form of ID and they were unable to find a listing for him in their medical database. His name is listed as Max Musterman, the local equivalent of John Doe. Secondly, his injuries are described in great detail. The prognosis was fairly grim. At the time of admission, Audrin had sustained third-degree burns over 60% of his body. He had also been on the receiving end of massive blunt force trauma. Two of his ribs were broken, and his pelvis had been shattered. On top of these terrible wounds, he was also suffering from radiation toxicity. 
Chart suggests that his body had absorbed over 5,000 millisieverts of ionizing radiation. Without treatment, he almost certainly would have died. Finally, the date of admission catches your attention. Audrin was delivered to the hospital on the 25th of September, 2039. The admitting nurse estimated his age at the time to be 25. Amsel studies your face as you step back from the computer. Your thoughts? Hold nothing back. I'd like to hear everything that comes to mind. The hospital couldn't ID Audrin. Either somebody covered his tracks for him or he was living completely off the grid. Indeed, if Audrin were a denizen of the SOX, a glow punk, his lack of identifying information would make sense. Amsel adjusts his glasses. It's a working theory, at any rate. So, one way or another, Audrin is off the books, either due to living off-grid or a cover-up after the fact. Do you have another takeaway to share? Audrin might have spent some time in the SOX. That radiation poisoning didn't happen on its own. Agreed. 5,000 millisieverts is a lot of exposure. Short of basking in the glow of an unshielded reactor, I don't know how he'd have absorbed so much ionizing radiation without spending time in the SOX. Alright, so Audrin was heavily irradiated, most likely from time spent in the SOX. What else does this tell you? Well, those burns sound like dragon fire, but the fire wing burned off. But if the Firewing burned Audrin, why would he be working for her now? I don't think that Audrin is working for the Firewing. I believe that he is serving her. On Green Winter's second DVD, he mentions that there is a cult within the SOX that worships the Firewing. The Disciples of the Cleaning Fire. Okay, I guess that wasn't a typo earlier. It is the Cleaning Fire. That's so weird. I believe that Audrin belongs to this cult. Bad news, there's nothing more dangerous than a zealot. My thoughts exactly. A hireling can sometimes be bribed or reasoned with. A pawn can be liberated. But if the Firewing soldiers look upon her as a goddess figure, nothing short of killing her will deter them. And even that might not stop them. So, to sum it up, Audrin has probably spent time in the SOX. It is possible that he even lived there, as a member of Fierceswing's dragon cult. And he is after you. Amsel pauses for a moment before continuing. In my mind, all of this reinforces one fact. We need to find Beauclair, and we need to do it fast. Agreed. Good. That's all the more reason to gather Alice's fee as quickly as possible. There's a buzzing sound from Paul's wrist. He lifts a hand to look at his PDA. And as luck would have it, Frau Müller has arrived. Best of luck at the meeting, Pixel. Remember, this is urgent. We need that money. I'm on it. All right, so I'm gonna check the work terminal really quick. Just to see how that job panned out. Oh, I have two unread messages as well. Alright, I'll read those and I'll check the job board. Screen flickers to life. Malit's face appears. From the shifting background and ambient noise, it's clear that this message was recorded on a portable device. Oi, Pixel, I just wanted to tell you that I've met with limited success in working the stack of DVDs. It's a thorny problem. But at least I'm making some headway. If you look on the table beside your DVD player, you will find another recovered disc. I wasn't able to salvage all of the files on it, but I think you might find what I did discover to be of interest. For my part, I'm going to continue working with the other DVDs. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't hold out much hope though. They're all badly damaged and suffering from disc rot besides. I'll be in touch. My best to you and your team. The message ends and the image fades. You find yourself back at the inbox. Um, 
from Silk to Pixel. Hi, Pixel. This is Silk from the hotel. I hope it's okay that I'm writing you. Samuel gave me your email address. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you for everything that you did for me. Kicking my cram habit was the hardest thing that I've ever done, and I don't think I would have tried if you hadn't talked me into it. To celebrate my newfound sobriety, I've decided to sign on as a volunteer at the charity. Who knows? Maybe giving back to the community will help turn things around in my life. Anyway, thanks again, Pixel. I owe you one. Alright. Let's check the job directory. Okay. Dare I check this? You submit the job as finished and await your client's response. A few moments later, a message pops onto the screen. No sense in mincing words. Your job performance was satisfactory at best. Your fee will be transferred immediately. Enjoy it while it lasts, because you'll never work for us again. Moment later, blah, 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 payment details. For crew. I had a feeling. Whatever. I live with my mistakes. Right. Better pet the puppy. And... Ooh, yeah, karma. Definitely having some of that karma. I think quickness would be good. It'll help me dodge. And... Maybe some... Yeah, I'll unlock a new etiquette. Let's see, corporate, security, gang, socialite, street, or academic. I'll say street. Sounds good. That's where I'll leave it for now, so. Yeah, thank you, everyone who came by to watch. And I will see you next time. Bye. Have a good night.